Hi, my name is Patrick Hartz. I'm a platform engineer and a sales engineer here at Anynines. A huge part of my job is working closely with our customers and help integrate the Anynines platform into their environment to provide a comprehensive application development platform. Such application runtime platforms like Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry makes the process of developing, testing, deploying and scaling applications really fast and easy. Nevertheless, they do not offer data services by default. And this is where the Anynines Data Service Framework joins the game. It offers a full lifecycle automation for the most important databases in a self-service manner. In the first video, we will learn how to set up a PostgreSQL service instance, um, push the blog post application to Cloud Foundry and let make the application use of the service instance by binding it. Part two of the series covers topics around the data service instance itself, when the instance doesn't fit the needs anymore, or the instance runs out of resources. The best database automation is totally useless when it comes to an outage of the underlying infrastructure and you don't have a backup to recover. This topic is part three of the series. Finally, in part four, we will talk about the self-service capabilities of the framework and we will cover topics like logging and monitoring. Before we start with the demo, let's talk shortly about what PostgreSQL is and what it is used for. PostgreSQL is an open source relational database system, which is highly extensive and covers most of the SQL standard. Like a lot of relational database system, it um, supports transactions and follows the ACRD pattern, um, which guarantees that transactions are processed reliably. Wherever a relational database model is needed to re to represent data in tables in a straightforward way, PostgreSQL is a pretty good choice. The N9 PostgreSQL is an implementation of the open source PostgreSQL and comes with a bunch of features the application developer doesn't have to take care of anymore. The N9 Data Service Framework provides high availability features, which combines three virtual machines to a cluster with asynchronous replication. With the approach to create dedicated data services on own virtual machines, the framework uh, provides the best possible instance isolation. Also, the framework makes it fast and easy to scale database service instances horizontally and vertically. Topics like backup, logging and metrics are also well covered. In this demonstration, we will focus on pushing a small blog post application to Cloud Foundry and let the application make use of a PostgreSQL service instance. To achieve this goal, we have some prerequisites. First, we need a Cloud Foundry offering. In our case, we will use the Anynines public pass. To connect to the Cloud Foundry API, we will use the Cloud Foundry CLI, which is installed on a device with an internet connection. Also, the GitHub CLI, um, or better, the Git CLI is used to download the source code of the blog post application. Um, before we start now, one hint from my side. Whenever you need help, the Anynines documentation is a good place to look for. Like already mentioned, um, in our case, we'll, we will use the Anynines public pass. In a separate video, we will talk in more detail about the usage of it. For now, it is enough to know that we have credentials to authenticate against the Cloud Foundry API. So we will switch to the console and log in. So the first thing we will do before we push the application to Cloud Foundry is that we will create the service instances before. The reason is quite simple. As we are creating dedicated virtual machines for each service instance, um, this will take some time until the underlying automation created all the virtual machines for us and the service is ready to use. Cloud Foundry organizes all available service offerings in the Cloud Foundry marketplace. 
This is the entry point to know which offerings are available there. To see the marketplace, we can use the CF Marketplace command. Okay, this is, um, this is a lot of information and because we are just interested in, in the AnyNight's PostgreSQL 10 service, um, we can add the name of the service, the AnyNight's PostgreSQL 10, to the CF Marketplace command and see the offering in more detail. I don't want to go too deep into the differences between the several service plans. This is covered in part two of the series. For now, it's enough to know that a single instance, like the name suggests, consists um, out of one virtual machine and a clustered virtual machine um, is a combination of three virtual machines to a cluster. As we are in the beginning of uh, developing the blog post application, um, it is totally enough to choose a single small service plan. So let's do that. So the next we need is the service plan name. It's single small and we give it a name. I would say my PG. As I already mentioned, this process will take some time and it's highly dependent um, of the underlying infrastructure underneath the AnyNine's data service framework and its used automation. But let's talk shortly about what's happening in the background. The automation we use is Bosch. Bosch is a tool chain for release engineering, software deployment and application lifecycle management. What we should know about Bosch is that Bosch creates a virtual machine. If the virtual machine is created, Bosch installs all the software provided by any nines to set up an enterprise-ready PostgreSQL service instance. An interesting fact is that Bosch separates the virtual machine from its persistent data. So in the case a virtual machine dies unexpectedly, Bosch just recreates the virtual machine and attaches the persistent data which is present on a separate disk again to the virtual machine and the service is back without data loss. While we are waiting for the service instance to be created, we can use the time to download the application from the AnyNines GitHub page. In order to do this, we open the browser, go to GitHub. The application is called AnyNines Postgres app. Um, we will link the page also in the video description. So let's go back to the console. The command is git clone and then the name of the repository. We will change into the folder. So when, a, when the application is downloaded, we are in the folder. We can push the application by using the cf push command. It's cf push. There's one flag we need to add now, it's the no start flag. As we, have, as we don't have a database where the application is connected to, um, the application would not start. So therefore we push the application, but we will not start it right now. Okay, this takes a couple of, couple of seconds. Um, we can see the application um, is, not, is not started. So let's check how far the creation of the services. Therefore, we use the CF service command with the name of the service instance. It's uh, mypg. Okay, the creation is successful. Now we can bind the application to the data service. The command is CF bind service. We need the name of the um, application is Postgres app and then the name of the service instance. Okay, that's all we need to let the application know about the data service instance. But what exactly happened right now? 
Like in most database systems, what you need is a username, a password, and a URL to connect to the database itself. At the moment, we executed these commands. Two, two things are happening. The first thing is Cloud Foundry talks to our data service framework. Our framework is then talking to the service instance and creates service credentials for us. The second step then is that Cloud Foundry retrieves these credentials from the N9 data service framework and stores the credentials in the environment variables of the application in its container. So to check if this happened, we can um, see which environment variables are um, available inside the application container, also when it's not running at the moment. For this, we use the command cfnv post postgres app. And here we see all environment variables which um, are present. The interesting part for us is everything under the tag VCAP services. You can see that there are credentials for Anynance PostgreSQL 10 service. And besides a username, password, and the URL, you can find a lot of other information. You will find also a URE, uh, which is quite often used in frameworks to easily connect to the data service instance. So all you have to do in your application, retrieve the credentials from the environment variables, yeah, and make use of it. So let's go back to our application. As you remember correctly, we pushed the application with the no start flag. So what we have to do is yeah, simply start the application. It is the cf start command and the name of the application. And also this takes a couple of seconds or one or two minutes. When we execute the command cf, cf start, um, Cloud Foundry is taking the application source code, takes a build pack and also um, a file stack. Everything will be combined to an OCI image, which runs later on in own application container inside the Diego cell. Okay, if this is done and the application is pushed to Cloud Foundry, we can use the URL to connect to the application. So we will find it here in the section routes. We could also see some details about the application with the command uh, CF app, PostgreSQL, uh, Postgres app, sorry. And there's also again the information about, about the route. So open your browser, paste in the URL. Yeah, and that's it. We are ready now to create a blog post and store the data inside our database. Title, okay. Okay, create post. So before we come to an end, some words about the bind service command. Uh, like I said, the bind service command is doing two things. On one side, it creates um, service credentials the so-called service keys, and then it makes the service keys available inside application container. The command we need to create a service key is, uh, is pretty easy. It's cf create service key with the name of the um, service instance. It's mypg and also a name for the key. Okay, the key is created. Now we want to know how the key looks like. As you can see, the service key is similar to what we've seen in the VCAP services stack. So we have again all the credentials we need to connect to the database. We could use these credentials also in other legacy applications which are pushed somewhere else. Okay, I think that's it for now. Let's do a quick recap on what we learned. First, um, I gave an introduction about what the uh, Anglian Data Service uh, Framework is, about the benefits. I explained also a bit about the PostgreSQL service itself. Then we created a service instance, pushed an application to Cloud Foundry, and let the application make use of the PostgreSQL service instance. 
In the next video, we will look more deeply into the data service instance itself. We will adapt it to the needs of the application. We will tweak it somehow. Thanks for joining now and we'll see us in the next video. If you like our content, leave a like, push the subscribe button and follow us on YouTube and our other social media channels.